We read in Philippians 4, verses 4 to 9 in the NIV. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Brothers and sisters, you may have heard the Hebrew word shalom and wondered, what does it mean? Well, I've discovered that there isn't one English word to translate this Hebrew word easily. Shalom means complete or whole. Shalom experience is multidimensional. It's complete well-being, physical, psychological, social, and spiritual. It flows from all of one's relationships being put right with God, within oneself, and with others. Jesus says, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Shalom consists not only of outward peacefulness, but also peace within. Those who trust in the Lord have inner security. Therefore, they can sleep well. We can see that God gives perfect peace, or shalom, shalom, psychological and emotional peace to those who steadfastly set their minds on him. We see in Isaiah 32, 17, that the result of righteousness before God is peace. Its effect will be quietness and confidence forever. As a verb, shalom means to bring restoration to wholeness or to reconcile or repair a broken relationship. So if we jump back into the Old Testament, we see the prophets foretelling of a coming time of complete shalom, not only for Israel, but also for the whole world. We know that only God can create shalom and that this gift will come through the work of the Messiah, the Prince of Shalom. So you can see that shalom is perhaps the most basic characteristic of the future kingdom of God when the Lord himself comes to heal all that is wrong with this world. In Luke 2.14, we see the angels tell the shepherds about the birth of Christ, and they call him the one who will at last bring peace on the earth. Jesus is the Prince of Peace, or the Prince of Shalom. Thus, the gospel of Jesus is the gospel of peace. So you see, brothers and sisters, that we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus as he restored to wholeness the broken relationship between humans and God our Father, the creator of heaven and earth. We are called as the body of Christ to participate in shalom with each other and to bring shalom to those around us. Shalom isn't just the absence of conflict. True peace is taking what's broken and restoring it to wholeness, whether it is in ourselves, our relationships, or in our world. Are you ready to roll up your sleeves and do what God is asking us to do? What Jesus commissioned us to do as his followers? If you are, please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we come humbly before you, seeking grace in our time of needing grace. We recognize that we fall short in our understanding of who you call us and created us to be individually as well as amongst our brothers and sisters. We are grateful that Jesus is our Prince of Peace and that through him we can pursue shalom within ourselves, our relationships, and to bring peace and restoration to those around us and that you call us to live life with. We are reminded today through many scriptures that shalom is what you have placed in our hearts to long for, that one day you will return, Jesus, to make all things new and right once again. Though we long for this day to come quickly, we realize that we have much to do as you lead us, Holy Spirit, to put on our shoes of the gospel of peace and walk in your ways, bringing hope to a broken and hurting world, that others may see you and find you and choose also to follow in your footsteps, Jesus. May you be glorified in our thoughts and actions, and may we sleep deeply at the end of the day in your peace, knowing that you have us securely in the palm of your hand, Daddy God. We pray this all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.